and welcome to another episode of Noser's Marvelous Tutorials with Realm Smith. I am your host as usual, Jason Azevedo. I'm wearing a hat today. It's a lazy Sunday. Uh, I'm sure you all are feeling it too. Hopefully you guys are getting a chance to kind of chill out, relax, and enjoy uh, what's going on today. We are painting a flump today. Uh, I want to thank, first of all, Dungeons & Dragons for hosting us uh, on their channel. I want to thank WizKids for providing us the incredible minis that we paint on a weekly basis. And I want to thank Vallejo for the incredible paints and for their sponsorship to make this all happen. Um, this flump looks really great. Uh, it's a lot of fun. A couple quick announcements before we get started. Tomorrow, uh, we have episode six. Ooh, uh, almost halfway through Into the Mist. You guys are, uh, I just want to say that it has been incredible, the response that we've had lately on our live streams. Um, I think it's a mixture of having the uh, incredible Matt Mercer on our premiere and then also having Nora and Matt throughout the uh, season so, so far. Um, but it has been amazing. It's exploded. The channel's exploding. People are watching it. People are binging the first few seasons, and we've seen like this massive, massive uptake in viewership. So we want to thank you so much. We are live right now on D and D and on the Realm Smith channel. Um, so enjoy it in either way, e either place that you are watching. You can ask questions in both. Our moderators watch both to make sure that they capture all the questions you guys have. If you have questions, write question in capitals, and then your question. If you have a comment, comment in capitals, and then my wonderful uh, Smith Guardians, which we call them, the Realm Smith Guardians, um, they ca copy them all into um, Discord for me so that I can read them so I'm not kind of like, uh, weeding through the um, my glasses are a little uh, not so great right now so this is what we do live folks <sighs> as we go just normal people painting crazy minis <sighs> just like that <laughs> oh dear it's Sunday it's been a long week all right so uh, I do see a lot of our um, uh, realm smithers um on the chat thank you so much guys uh again monday night tomorrow night episode six uh episode uh then we have behind the screen tuesday <laughs> uh my brain's always a little not so good on sundays uh when i do this show behind the screen on tuesday that is your q a opportunity to ask me all the wonderful questions that you guys have uh regarding oh, realm smith and all of that stuff yes realm realmers unite sakura says um, all the realmers, uh, and then um, players table with Joel Oje on Thursday, and he he's had done this really fun thing the last couple of weeks where he's like taken uh, scenes from our episodes and then kind of walks them through uh, and and talks about them, which is so much fun. And then of course uh, back to this on Sunday, and then Monday, uh, the next Monday, then we'll and then we do it all again every week. We have four shows a week, so pumped, and we're working on more, folks. It's going to be nuts. I'm so excited for the future of Realmsmith. Um, we have some pretty big announcements coming soon. All right. Let's see here. Tools, as usual. We've got the Flump Miniatures by WizKids. Uh, there's two of them. I am going to batch paint them both. Um, it shouldn't take too long today. Um, we usually only go the length that it takes to paint the miniature because that is better for the VOD version of the video. Uh, we've got some brushes. We're using Vallejo brushes. Today we're going to be using probably a number one, a number two, and a dry brush. Maybe a dry brush. Probably a dry brush, actually. Um, and then also some water for diluting your paints and cleaning your brushes. Paper towel for dry brushing and cleaning off and drying your brushes, as well as a paint palette for holding your point, paint point holding your point and mixing <laughs> paint list is a little shorter than the ones that we've had uh, we are doing two different colors i wanted to kind of have fun with the flimph um we're heavy okra is going to be the base coat for all of it um then bone white with a sepia wash is going to be kind of where we go after that um, off white for some highlights electric blue for one flump squid pink for the other flump then we have black uh for the um pupils in the eyes, blue wash for the blue one, flesh wash for the pink one, and then some somber gray for the base. And we don't always do the base, so there we go. All right, so I'm just going to bring up the questions here so I have them ready to go, and then we will get moving. Um, questions for Jason. Here we go. All right, we got some rollover questions too from the 
past week, which is all good as well. So, man, just a big shout out to our Smith Guardians for all that they do on a weekly basis. We couldn't do this madness that we do without them, and we love them so very much. Um, so, so very much. All right, chat is really super active. I love it. Okay, so this is the flump. Oh my goodness, he is so stinking cute. Look at this. Look at this wonderful jellyfish of a flump. So great. And then we have this one. Got a little, got a little uh, excited, I think. But they are awesome. Really great minis. We'll start with this one. I think I'm going to do this one kind of the standard blue color, I think is the case. But to start, we are going to use heavy ochre. Bit of a headache today. It's not good. Heavy ochre. And we're going to place them in our palette. And it is this great kind of rich, yellowy tone. Um, the extra opaque paints are base paints. So basically, they go on solid in one coat. That is the intention of them. Um, and that is what we are going to use them for. Uh, yeah. And here we go. We're just going to go through and base coat the entirety of the miniature. Now, you want to stay away from that clear. It's going to be challenging for some of it because painting all these little tentacles is always a, a challenge when you have lots of appendages or um, that sort of thing. But we're going to stay away from that clear post that exists to make it look like it's floating. But in the monster manual and on the back of the uh, of the blister pack, you can see that the flumps have this kind of cool sort of sepia yellowish tone in the recesses, which is why I kind of wanted to use this guy here. I may actually do the sepia wash um, I may do the sepia wash after the heavy ochre and not after the bone white. We'll see. How it all comes through. And this is basically like painting hair. We just want to make sure we get it into all the crevices, right down to the bottom. Even though we're going to paint the bottom of this the blue color, we still want a nice solid base coat over this primer. And again, as usual, uh, my dad's calling me. Um, not sure why. Here, I'm going to answer my dad. Hello, dad. Hang on, you are on uh, the phone. Uh, I am on the internet right now doing a, a video. <laughs> doing uh, It's okay, well, what's up? Oh yeah, yeah, I'll talk to you about that after. I'll have to call you after. No, <laughs> you need new ones. It came, it came with new ones. Okay. It's tech support. Okay, Dad, love you. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> my dad doesn't know. I told him I have a stream. I don't even know necessarily if he understands what streaming is. Um, I, uh, but, you know, family first. And when Dad calls, you answer. Uh, but he got a new iPhone today, and he's very happy with it. Um, but of course he was here this afternoon and I was kind of teaching him how to set it up and everything. He got an XR, um, and, uh, and he called me, he just said, I don't, I don't see, he says, I don't see the hole where the earphones go in. And I was like, dad, there's a new, you get a new set in there that have the new attachment. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, dad, he's the best. Oh man, gotta love dads and their or parents rather and their tech support questions. I get them all the time. But you gotta take time for your dads. I usually drop what I'm doing and moms and parents in general. Okay, let's get to some questions here. All right. 
Questions for Sunday. Here we go. Kevin. Kevin Man Mac Manx Man? Man X Man? Kevin Man X Man. Um, other than D&D &D and COC, what other TTRPG have you played? That is a great question. Um, uh, I haven't played a lot of them, frankly, to be honest with you. Uh, in the past, I played Top Secret, which was really super fun. Way back in the day, uh, I have tried Pathfinder in small doses before. Um, I have played Cyberpunk. There's a, a sizably viewed, in fact, our most viewed video ever. Um, although the premiere of this season is climbing, is our cyberpunk game uh, that was uh, GM'd by the creator of the cyberpunk Red TT RPG, which the video game is based off of, um, Mike Pondsmith. He GM'd us through a game, and it has a ton of views on our channel. You can check that out on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash realmsmith, uh, and that was a lot of fun. Cyberpunk is great. We did two parts, and we're looking to um, finish up the trilogy of, of sessions, hopefully sometime soon. Um, apart from that, I've maybe played, like, some one-shots. Uh, I did play a game with DM Scotty uh, of the DMs Guild. He's, like, the legend himself, uh, Scotty, who played us through something called Survive the Night. And I've actually run it since. For my friends, um, which is ba was basically like like saw, it was like a, you have to survive through the night, um, being kind of chased by this maniac. Anyways, lots of fun. Um, so those are the TTRPGs that I've played. Top Secret was a big one when I was a kid, um, and it was basically the one where I mean, we played D and D all of the time when I was a kid. So it was just the one that we would play when we wanted a bit of a break from D and D. Um, or just to try something a little different. Uh, but we always came back to D&D, of course. Or between campaigns or, or whatever. But it was kind of a fun, um, a fun little departure to kind of get into the spy world. Top Secret X SI? Or Top Secret SI. I still have the box set. It was so fun. Any of y'all play Top Secret back in the day? It was a blast. Okay, so it's really kind of hard to get back there, but I tried to get the best that I could um, in behind all of those tentacles. So um, I think the best part about my dad, one of the fav my favorite things about my dad is that he still says, can you dig it? <laughs> and he is this, you know, late 60s Portuguese dude. And he'll be like, Jay, gas prices are so, Jason, gas prices are so expensive. Can you dig it? <laughs> it's the best. I love it. Oh, dads. Okay. I mean, my dad was around when can you dig it was a thing. All right. Okay, so we're going to put that guy down. Decent base coat on him. Flump number one. You're just going to rest there. This flump is going to be easier because he's kind of splayed out here. But his tentacles come right down to the bottom here. So it's going to be fun. All right, here we go. Let's see. Question from Dag Crystal. What is a flump monster manual view? Good question. So I do have my monster manual here. I'm just going to reach and hopefully not take out anything while I'm trying to reach across. Everything. Oh, I did drop some stuff. Oh, well. What are you going to do? Flump. I think it's in the DM's guide. Ooh, it might not be. Is it? Oh, I think it is. I think it is. I think it is. I hope it is. I can't remember if it's one in one of the... If it's in one of the expansions or if it's actually... There it is. <laughs> that is a flump. It is basically like a floating um, jellyfish kind of thing. A mysterious flump. Flumps. The mysterious flumps drift through the underdark, propelled through the air by the jets whose sound gives them their name. A flump 
glows faintly, reflecting its moods and its color. Soft pink means it's amused. Deep blue is sadness. Green expresses curiosity. And crimson is anger. Intelligent and wise. There you go. So, oh, that is interesting. So I didn't realize, actually, because I haven't run a flump for, before, that their, um, their color determines their mood. Huh. So that's interesting. So part of me wants to make this guy like mad, like red. You know what I mean? Because... He looks like he's like, like this guy's just like, ho oh, hum, kind of walking around. Hey, guys. And then this guy's like, floof. He wants to like. Anyways, I'm going to make him pink. Pink is amused. That could be an amused color. Amused expression. Um, but yeah, this one would be good to do red if you wanted to. Cool. Um, yeah, there's lots of details about them. When we put the, the wash on these, then we'll maybe do some reading, do some Rumsmith story time. Kind of go through the flimps. I like calling them flimps. Sax Kitasaurus says, are flumps in wave 12? Yes, uh, I think. They may be wave 11. In fact, I think they're wave 11. But if you go on to, if you look up or Google WizKids UPM for unpainted minis, UPM, I think it's upm.wizkids.com. Um, it will tell you which wave. Just look up Flumpf. It'll tell you which wave it is in. But I think it's 11. I don't think it's 12. So it should be out already. They're so fun, though. They're so cute. Some of my favorite kind of looking characters or creatures. Have you ever used army paints? I have used army painter. Um, and I'm assuming you, use army, you mean army painter, the, the um, paint manufacturer or the paint brand. Um, and yes, I have tried it. Um, they do have some decent paint. Um, but uh, I chose to go the Vallejo route a long time ago because of the way that it's formulated and the consistency of their paints. Um, and what I mean by consistency is you know what you're going to get every time sort of thing. And the reason for that is that they um, formulate their own paints in Spain all in one facility. Um, and, uh, yeah, and they're just, they're just really great. So I'm not just saying that because they're our sponsor because I made that call before they sponsored us. To, to make the switch to, to Vallejo. But there are many great paint manufacturers out there, but Vallejo for me is the top choice. Okay. So fun. This is kind of like the, this for me is kind of the, Boring aspect. Not the boring. I don't want to say boring aspect. This is like the necessity. Some people like this process, kind of the base coating process. Um, it can be sort of calming or soothing or cathartic or whatever. But for me, I like to kind of, I tend to rush a little bit through this stage. But by rushing, I miss stuff. But I like to rush through it because it's the it's the washes and the highlight process that things really start to come together and start to look great. For me, this is kind of the paint by numbers sort of. That's why you'll see me using large brushes when base coating to try and get through it kind of fairly quickly to get to the, the fun stuff for me or the stuff that I like the most. Stuff that entertains me. Are you not entertained? Not by base coating. Honest. Just being honest. Comment. We love you too, Jason. Aw. That is from the Smith Guardian saying they love us too. There. They are 
really great, great folks. And they manage our Discord. And for those of you that are watching who haven't uh, been involved in our Discord, so you know, we do have a Discord server where um, our community can role play alongside of our Into the Mist Curse of Strahd live stream, basically, as Vistani, so as the uh, nomadic folks um, who are part of the world of, of Curse of Strahd and Barovia. Um, and basically they, they role play in text on channels in Discord all day. They can craft items that they sell and trade, which is fun. They travel to each other's camps to like hang out and they hold these wonderful um, parties called festanas once in a while. I don't know if it's once a month or, or how often they do them. I don't know if it's every Friday. Maybe you guys can clarify in the chat, but such an incredible community. And for me, the coolest part um, is that the events that they take part in. So they'll go on little quests that are Smith Guardians, um, which are kind of our mods and, and care caretakers of our of our Discord server. Some of them are uh, gifted DMs. So they actually take our community members, some of those Vistani, out on quests uh, and play D&D &D over Zoom or whatever they decide, what platform they decide to use. I think it's Zoom that most of them use. Um, and the results of those quests actually affect the um, outcome of our live stream. And so there are things that happen in that live stream that kind of bleed over into their world um, perfect example of that is there was a character in season one called Oral who was guested by um, David Morin, who now plays Muskoka. And he, pa he perished uh, episode one or two um, in the Death House and then showed up as a revenant to uh, chase Falfer, who he believed was responsible for his death. Sorry, these are spoilers for those of you who haven't watched into the Mist Season 1. Just cover your ears for a minute while we go through this. But anyways, he came back as a Revenant to find him, and Falfer dispatched him again. But recently, he was seen at one of the camps looking for a halfling. So, <laughs> anyways, it's so fun to like have an interactive experience with people who actually inform what we do. Uh, the quests that they are going on tie into, like I said, the main storyline of our live stream. And it is a blast. In fact, myself and David Morin and Julian, um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, we were hanging out and decided that we wanted to pay a visit to one of the camps as direwolves. And we attacked the camp. There was only three of them there, I believe. I think it was three or four. I think it was three. Yeah, three of them. Three Vistani were actually up and available, and the dire wolves killed one of them. I'm sorry, guys. But that's what happens in Barovia, and that's what happens in DAD. And it was all fun, and and um, it was taken taken well, but that's what happens. All right, base coding is complete. That was. Not so bad. I'm going to go back to the first one now, though. Clean your brushes. I try to do this. I kind of run it along so that I'm not um, messing it up too bad. Sometimes I... Oh, I just lost the head of my brush. <laughs> I think I've used this brush a few too many times. Oops. <laughs> Let's just... <laughs> how am I going to fish that out? Live TV, folks. It's not TV. I don't even know where it is. It's got to be in here somewhere. I actually can't find it. Where is it? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Oops. Ah. I, I can't actually... Oh, there it is. And I just spilt my water everywhere. I don't want it to rust in the water. That would be very bad. Fun. This is the beauty of painting, and that is an old, old Vallejo brush that I have 
used as much as I possibly can. It's on the cheaper side of the Vallejo brushes, kind of the more accessible ones. Um, they make uh, other kind of more pro brushes, but anyways, that one is done. I'm gonna have to grab my other number two, which I have here, thankfully. All right, <laughs> back to work. Uh, sepia shade, I'm gonna grab sepia shade. Che sepia shade is one of our washes. I should say one of Vallejo's washes. Um, and it is great, and my favorite wash personally. It's got this really great kind of warm sepia tone, believe it or not, from its title. Um, and it basically with a wash, what you wanna do if you're new to painting, dilute it just a touch, so a little bit of water, and then I'm just gonna brush it on. And what you wanna do is you wanna just brush it into the recesses. And what washes do is they go into the recesses and they create natural shadows and depth to your miniature. So as I kind of go across here, I'm gonna dilute it a little bit on the top because what happens with washes is that they tend to pool and kind of get a, a, muddle, a muddled look. Not a muddled, muddled, or muddled. Um, and so we wanna stay away from that on the top, but we are going to put a wash over all of the areas that we painted with that heavy ochre color like that you can see that it's starting to set at the kind of the base of the, the eye stalks um, and all of that kind of stuff in that little mouth area and then with the with the tentacles it's quite easy because all you do is you place it on here and then you just move it around and you know with washes it's more about manipulating the wash rather than actually um, painting with the wash if that makes sense so you're placing it on the miniature, but once it's placed on, you're not necessarily leaving it. You're moving it around until it rests into those recesses. And a wash is perfect for this kind of tentacle texture that has lots of little kind of crevices, uh, and it'll really separate these from each other. We'll do the outside first, and then we'll turn it around and do the inside. Sometimes you'll get little bubbles in the wash. Um, typically, they leave but I like to kind of make sure that they're gone prior to moving on make sure your your washes kind of wrap around the tentacles um, and then I'm going to take it off it's colder here and I'm going to go in and just add a wash into here now I'm kind of forcing it in here it's tough to get behind this flight stand but I need to and the washes tend to be really forgiving too. If you've missed areas uh, of, of the um, primer showing, uh, this tends to kind of like make it a bit easier and a bit better. There. Make sure I get a decent amount around the inside edge of that. There we go. That is a washed fifth I think this one is still wet a little bit touch yeah it's a touch wet still so we're just going to put that flump down wait for that one to dry washes take a little while so we're just going to let that one dry and maybe it's time for a little bit of realm smith monster manual story time from the D&D &D chat uh, Kothak66 asks, Jason Azevedo, how does it feel to be the Bob Ross of miniature painting? <laughs> I get that like at least every like two or three episodes. I take great pride in that and I am, I, I am honored to be known as the Bob Ross of miniature painting. Um, he is my hero and a hero to many. All right. Um, I used to watch that show all the time when I was a kid. Okay. Intelligent and wise, flumps communicate telepathically. Though they resemble jellyfish, flumps are sentient beings of great intelligence and wisdom, possessing advanced knowledge of religion, philosophy, mathematics, and countless other subjects. Flumps are sensitive to the emotional states of nearby creatures. If creature thoughts suggest goodness, a flump seeks that creature out. When facing creatures that exude evil, a flump flees. Psionic siphons. Flumps feed by siphoning mental energy from psionic creatures, and they can be found lurking near communities of mind flayers, aboliths, githyanki, githzari, etc. As passive parasites, they take only the mental energy they need, and most creatures feel no loss or discomfort from such feeding. Huh. Consuming psionic energy reveals the thoughts and emotions of the creatures. 
on which the flumps feed. Since so many of those creatures are evil, flumps are often subjected to thoughts, emotions, and hungers that sicken their pure nature. When flumps encounter good-hearted adventurers, they eagerly share the dark secrets they have learned in the hopes of casting down their evil sources of energy, even if doing so means they must seek out new sources of nourishment. Flumps live in complex and organized groups called cloisters, within which each flump has a place and purpose. These harmonious groupings have no need for leaders since all flumps contribute in their own way. I love these guys. Trust a flump. X the mystic's first rule of dungeon survival. Flumps. They're special. Um, small aberration, lawful good, of course. Armor class 12. Challenge 1 8th. Um, understands under common but can't speak it and has telepathy. Um, advanced telepathy, the flump, flump can perceive the content um, of any telepathic communication used within 60 feet of it, and it can be surprised, it can't be surprised by creatures with any form of telepathy. Really cool. If the flump is knocked prone, poor guy. Roll a die. On an odd result, the flump lands upside down and is incapacitated. <laughs> At the end of each of its turns, the flump can make a DC 10 dexterity saving throw, writing itself and ending the incapacitated condition if it succeeds. Oh, the flump is, a, this is a telepathic shroud. The flump is immune to any effect that would sense its emotions or read its thoughts, as well as divination spells. Really cool. So it's got tendrils it can fight, it can attack with. That will do 1d4 plus 2 piercing damage plus 1d4 acid damage and then acid damage does regular stuff uh, and then stench spray each creature in a 15 foot cone originated from the flump must succeed on a dc 10 dexterity saving throw will be coated in a foul smelling liquid for 1d4 hours and it's poisoned crazy that's a flump folks they're so fun. They're so cute. Okay, so that wash is drying nicely. I'm going to go in and add a wash to this other dude. I'm actually going to use this. This just this holder just kind of helps my. I'm starting to get old, folks, and I'm starting to feel the the taxing of painting all the time. My hands tend to seize up a little bit, so. This just helps give a larger area so I can just rest the mini in my hand rather than kind of like tensing up the, the hand to hold the mini. I still have my air cast on. Doctor said it's gonna be, I have to have it on in at least another three weeks. Not fun. Not wait to get it off. Well, I can take it off. I take it off to sleep and stuff and whatever, but and when I'm relaxing, but I'm not supposed to be walking without it. No fun, folks. No fun. All right. Okay. Uh, Gary Diamonds asks Hello, Gary Diamonds. What's your favorite dad joke? Oh, dear. Good question. I am horrible when it comes to jokes because when I'm put on the spot, I can never remember them. Uh, <laughs> this is like a joke within a joke with for the actual theme that I'm asking to, I've been asked to provide a joke for. And that is, oh, I missed a whole bunch, folks, of color in here. Just a whole bunch of paint. That happens. Um, the joke is, when does a joke become a dad joke? When it becomes apparent. That is my... That is my dad joke for today. Anomalous Zip. Zip. I always don't know how to, how to pronounce that. Welcome to our channel. She just joined our Discord and has been uh, commenting on all our YouTube videos. And she's just loving the content. She's just going through all of it. I think 
I think she just binged either Tides of Wild, I think Tides of Wild Mount because she um, reminisced on something that Adam Maines did that was like mind blowingly awesome. Um, and she's part of our Vistani community and it's wonderful. Anyways, just want to say welcome and thanks for tuning in. Um, I'm also just going to take him off for a second. Question is, what do you suggest a total noob at mini painting start with? Characters or scenery or something else? Good question. Great question. Um, so here's the thing about mini painting and being a noob mini painter. We do a lot of uh, mini painting tutorials and classes at shows. Uh, that is kind of our thing. Um, we've done it for some time and we typically have a booth that we get with Vallejo at shows and we will... Um, and we will hold these masterclass painting classes at shows. And they're awesome. We've done our packs and origins and so on and so forth. Um, we we're supposed to do a Gary Con this year. Unfortunately, that didn't work out um, because Gary Con was obviously um, became virtual because of COVID and so on. Anyways, um, and what I have found is, and what I always tell people is this, it's amazing how um, when a new painter comes to our classes and sits and paints for the first time. You know, oftentimes we will have, um, we'll put that, that painter's kind of painted miniature alongside somebody who was never painted before. So uh, somebody who, who paints all the time. So you get a new painter, noob, and you get a, uh, an experienced painter. And it's amazing how close those miniatures are. And it just t it proves or goes to show that it's all about steps that you take. Um, and it's all about technique, not necessarily talent for, for the way that I paint things anyways, which is kind of just functional uh, and table ready. Uh, and it's, it, that is always very, um, I guess, reassuring for me. And it just goes to show that you just need to try it. Like no matter how much you've painted or how little you've painted, if you try it, if you give it a go, then you do it. Uh, what I would suggest, though, is probably larger minis are probably easier to start. And so start on a giant or um, something like a beholder that's a bit bigger. Something that's beefier and bigger will probably help um, to start. But the biggest thing I would say is to watch tutorials. That's how I learned how to paint uh, back in my wargaming days. Watched a ton of online tutorials, learned the stuff, and then you almost like gained the knowledge of what to do through osmosis from watching people paint. Um, and then at that point, you kind of, yeah, you, you figure out and learn going forward, and then it just becomes kind of second nature, and that's how I learned. That was my kind of process. Okay, so we're just going to let this dry. This wash here is going to take some time. It's a little wet, but it will take a little bit of time to dry here. Sax asks, uh, where'd you get your hat? Good question. I got this at D&D Live. Not this year's, obviously, because it was virtual. The year before, um, I forget the name of the company. They make all kinds of D&D gear, and I got this hat there. And I love it, and it's my favorite hat. Oh, man, I am um, yawning on a Sunday. Usually, it's only on Tuesday's shows that I yawn. And they are Wave 12, so uh, they're either out or they're coming out soon. So... Um, Stay tuned, folks. Um, D. Nicole asks, as a DM, do you uh, use a personal preference adjust? As a DM, do you use a personal preference adjust the monster stats at all, or do you go by the book? Um, good question. Uh, I have absolutely... I have absolutely um, changed stats uh, based on the uh, environment, based on the encounter, based on the age of the creature. Maybe, you know, an older creature doesn't have as strong stats as maybe a younger version of that creature. I've absolutely done that, but typically I go by the book. Um, and you'll see that from our, our streams. And, you know, a lot. some people say, oh, you know, that creature's supposed to have this many hit points, and that should have been dead by now. And they tend to kind of, like, you know, have an opinion about... Um, how I'm running the creatures, but the truth is, in any D and D game, uh, if you're watching a stream or even if you're at the table uh, playing, you're not seeing necessarily what's happening behind the screen. 
So uh, it's difficult for anyone to kind of try and figure out what the DM's doing and just to have fun, basically, and just kind of trust that the DM knows sort of what they're doing and and all of that. I'm getting all these Bob Ross, <laughs> all these Bob Ross emojis in the chat. Oh, you guys. Um, from the D&D chat, Silver Sapphire 36 is a comment. I find these streams so relaxing and satisfying to watch. Well, thank you, Silver Sapphire. That means a lot. And it's relaxing for me too, frankly. Okay, so their eye stalks are the light color as well. And then they have the blue that kind of comes up halfway up their, their tentacles there. So I'm gonna start working in some of that bone white while the stalks, actually what I'm going to do is I'm gonna kind of wipe, because I'm gonna be painting this blue, I'm gonna take my clean brush and just kind of wipe some of this thick wash off the mini, just because I don't need it to be all that prominent because I am going to be painting over that area. So I'm just going to do that. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mix in, grab bone white, give it a good shake. Um, and then I'm going to mix that into that heavy ochre for kind of a mid range or mid tone color. My palette is a disaster. Because I have horrible palette etiquette, as we all know. Basically, I wait till it's thick enough so that I can peel it off. We have kind of, here we go. This is going to be kind of an in-between color. Got some water here. Okay. And then... That's a great color. So that there is going to be our next color. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to paint it across the mini in all the areas and all the kind of open areas that we have. Um, leave it out of the recesses. So exam for example, around the stock here, around the base of the stock, I'm just going to leave that open. And I am diluting it because I do want, the more you dilute the paint, the more it's going to blend. So diluting it just slightly but every time I go and grab some more I'll dilute it some more there are some areas here that aren't quite dry from the wash so I'm avoiding those areas for now I'll come back to them and there we go just making sure that we keep that darker kind of shade under and at the base of the stalks here, like that. And then also up the stalk, we're gonna go like this and up the back. And because we've kind of thinned out this, this mix, we are gonna see some of that shade kind of under it as well. So we're not afraid to kind of cover a lot of this because we're not worried too much about that part of it. Because again, we're gonna see some of that shadow in, under there anyways. So I'm gonna leave some of that in the recess there under the eye stock at the top. Make sure you get the lid and our flump is starting to come to life here. Now, I think what I wanna do in this situation is I was going to dry brush these tentacles because there is a pretty cool opportunity here because the, um, because the texture is so awesome here, or the layers rather, but I think I'm not. I think I'm gonna go solid on this one and then maybe dry brush the lighter step. Basically what I'm doing is I'm just going down each of the tentacles. I'm only going a little past half here because the bottom half is gonna be blue anyways. So uh, the risk you run with this is if you don't have a steady hand with a brush, you risk kind of undoing all of the wash in between the 
in between. Uh, but what you also can do is you can run the side of your brush like I am here. See, if you run the side of your brush, it just catches the kind of higher areas of the detail as well, like that. Because we want to make sure, like I said, that that heavy ochre and the sepia wash is evident in the recesses. Like that. Awesome. And then I do, I mean, it doesn't look so bad in here because and it's hard to see anyways, but I do want to give a little bit of this. It's going to be messy, but I do want to get in there a little bit. But if it's darker, it's okay because it is recessed in behind there. And we want to make sure not to hit that. Okay. There we go. And then we're going to do another coat probably of that over, over that. You can kind of see there are some brush strokes on there still. Uh, but that's okay. That also gives the flump a little texture, which I don't, which I don't mind too. This one is still quite wet. I think I'm just going to leave that guy to dry there for now. D. Nicole asks, Jason, have you checked out the Odyssey of Theros? Uh, D and D book, your group I feel would have a lot of fun with my with mythic Greek esque characters. I have not actually. Um, there's a lot kind of that we're looking at right now and and kind of getting through. And there's so much in the world of D and D that you know you kind of have to have a bit of tunnel vision sometimes to kind of like make sure you're not taking on too much or or whatever. So we have not looked into that, but I have absolutely been curious to dig in and see what it's all about and see if there's anything we can pull from there um, for sure. Okay, so again, I'm taking a bit more of that color. The top is kind of dry already, so I just want a bit more of that color and fill it in a little bit more so it's a bit more solid. Um, but again, now I'm not going as far to the edges as it was before because we're, we are building that subtle transition between the darker areas and the recesses. But I do like how light the top is now. And then again, I'm just gonna take the edge of my brush a little bit and then we will, we will be kind of dry brushing those tentacles with some lighter colors here. I didn't go back actually onto the tentacle, onto the eye stalks. So let's do that. Just on the edge now, I'm going to leave the rest kind of that darker. And then also on this bottom area because that's what would catch light here. And then just make sure you get those eyelids like that. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Now this guy's already dry. That guy is not. So I'm going to go ahead to the blue on this now. Um, and start some of that blue process. Um, I don't know how I got wash on here, but I did. I'm gonna fix this a little bit here. There we go. Okay, so with the blue, we're gonna take electric blue. And this is gonna be a nice, vibrant blue. Um, and with the color scheme on the box art here, we do see that they have this kind of vibrant kind of blue color and then dark blue sort of in the recesses. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna use electric blue, like I said, dilute it just a touch and we are going to go about halfway up the tentacles. And I know, right, we're undoing all of that beautiful work that we just did, but that's okay, folks. That's kind of the intention here. And we're just gonna try and feather it a little bit. And what I mean by feathering is I am trying to, the best that I can, and it goes up fairly high actually, 
I've noticed. It kind of even goes up here. We're going to go fairly high on this. Um, because we're going to use a, a blue wash on there too. So you're going to get the same effect that you did with the sepia, but with the blue. And for feathering, all I mean is that what you're doing basically is trying to kind of like, you're going to get hard lines on this just the way it is. Um, just because of the in, how strong we're using on the paint. But through washes, we're going to blend that a little bit. So that is the intention, to use the wash to do the blending. Now, another way to blend this, if you wanted to, which I may actually try here, is to really dilute some, get some blue, really dilute it like this, and then, actually, that works nicely. I'm actually creating a bit of a wash with, with the paint. Um, that actually worked really nice. So continue with the heavy blue here, closer to the bottom. And then you can see how I've basically just used water to dilute the paint that I've kind of already put on there. Um, and that has blended it quite nicely, actually. So like I said, you paint kind of a hard line there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, get a little bit of water and then just do this. And then what you're doing is you're kind of blending that transition there. Like that. That worked actually quite nicely. Then go back in with some thicker blue and make sure that you're not, that you're still getting solid blue below that line. And you may have to come back in and get some more, but. Okay, we'll take it off here. Now this is the fun part. This is gonna be interesting, trying to get blue to cover all of these tentacles on the inside. Because, I mean, if you don't get it all, like I said, the blue wash is gonna be super forgiving. It's gonna tint even areas that you missed with blue, so it won't feel so bad. And you really can't even see what's going on back here necessarily. Um, you know, if your players are that concerned about missing areas, then you have bigger issues as a DM. But, um, you know, that's probably good enough. I've coated the back enough to kind of get the feeling that we want. You can also see that it's drying kind of a little lo uh, lower than I wanted it to. So I'm just going to go back again and fill in some of that blue. But you can see that that transition is pretty good. Okay, we're going to leave that blue there. Let that dry. Get back to questions here. Let's see if we got any. Uh, anonymous, anomalous, I know I have such a hard time with that. I'm just going to call you Zip from now on. Zip uh, asks, do you know that when you lurk in the Discord, we all are shaking in our boots? <laughs> uh, good, it's Barovia. You should be. Uh, most of the time, I'm just kind of checking out, you know, what's going on, how you guys are doing, what you guys are talking about, you know. All that stuff, but yeah, sometimes when I lurk, um, not often, but sometimes when I lurk, it's because I'm gonna bring the doom. <laughs> that was that was bad. That was really bad. Most of the time, it's because I just want to hang out and say hi. Sometimes it's because we're planning something, but. Not as often. So more often than not, we are just, I'm just excited to kind of have you guys on our channel and all of that fun stuff. Okay, so I'm going to go back again. Uh, this is taking a while to, to dry as, as the last one was. So we're just going to go in here, take some of this mix, add a little bit of water, and I'm just going to start to do the same thing with this flump that I did for the other one. We're an hour in, folks, and we are doing great. Lots of time. 
It will not take us another hour to finish these guys. But like I said, the point of this show is to demonstrate to new painters out there and people who are considering painting, but it's a little daunting or, or um, intimidating to say, hey guys, look, look what you can accomplish in less than two hours. It's not incredibly difficult and it's not definitely not something to be afraid of. I want to make sure I get under this ridge here, but not right into the recess there. Oh, well, like I just did. So what I do when I make a mistake like that is I get a clean brush and I just zoop like a like an eraser. Um, I definitely don't want to, I want to make sure we maintain the dark into that recess there. So fun. I like paint, painting creatures that I like. There's something about it. Okay. We always paint all these evil creatures too. Well, not necessarily. I guess sometimes we paint like adventurers and such, but this is so fun. And again, I'm being careful not to paint right into the recess where the eye kind of stalks meet the eyeball part because you want to maintain some, some shadow in there, some delineation. Okay, that looks great. Okay, we are gonna let that sit now. I am gonna start to paint. I'm gonna need some more of this mix. So we're gonna take some bone white again. It's about a 50-50 mix, I think. And some heavy ochre. And look at some more questions. There we go. Writing Machine 123 asks, any advice for converting my friend to Realmsmith without blowing up the Into the Mist Twitch chat? And maybe the Discord Vistani. He's just as autistic as me, but even more funny. You guys will love him. Um, any advice to, for converting my friend to Realmsmith without blowing up in the Into the Mist Twitch chat? Um, great question. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by blowing up, but I mean, we welcome all. And I think that it's important that you know, when joining a community like this, um, that, you know, people are upfront about their um, current scenario, situations, um, challenges, if there are challenges, um, and we're super accommodating and, um, and welcoming community. Um, and I'm sure we'd love to have your friend join. Um, it'd be great. And that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, uh, I think that communication is key. Uh, and I appreciate you kind of giving us the heads up, and it's going to be fun. Okay. There we go. And I'm just going over again. That's already dried. So I'm just going over one more time to match the other one. They're pretty much the same now. And now I'm going to go through and paint the stalks. Sax asks, I'm going to be laid up for six weeks or so after surgery. Will you be releasing the minis you'll be painting for the next several weeks? Um, I will not. And it's been tough lately because uh, just because of how busy we are, it's been hard for me uh, I used to kind of plan them and, and post them. Uh, I will try to do that. I'm, I'm going to tell you that we have some other stuff going on right now. We're finalizing um, some Vallejo and WizKids work that we're working on. Um, uh, some of you have already said, and, and they may even be in some stores in Europe, but we're just finalizing and, 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 and working out the um, WizKids Vallejo paint line that is being released. Uh, it should be coming to distributors soon north america i think it's a couple weeks before it's in stores um but it's coming so 
that is taking up a lot of our non-streaming time. So that's why we've kind of been fast and, and a bit loose with Nolzers lately and haven't been releasing exactly what I'm painting uh, a long time before. Um, that said, I will try. I can, I can say that. I can say for sure that I will try uh, and try and put together the next couple weeks but it's getting pretty nuts here at Realm Smith, and just want to make sure that we set expectations correctly. Um, all right. There we go. Perfect. Okay, and then go through here. Like I said, I'm just going ahead and highlighting all of this with that mix. And then we'll end up dry brushing some. And actually, the dry brush, too, is go also going to um, help to blend as well. That's another method that we're going to use to blend that blue into this kind of off-white sort of bone color for these tentacles. go okay that's pretty done there we go okay we'll go back to the other fluve hopefully that one's dry and we can add that blue wash and you can see the magic that the wash is going to cause or create um look at that so oh still a little wet in here i think yes still wet so just gonna now i can go around and see any areas that i've missed there are definitely some tentacles that we that i did not paint properly or enough especially this one down here by the base there we go Uh, I do actually probably want to use some. I have Vallejo. I don't think I have them here. They have grass tufts. Oh, these are fun. Little grass tufts. And these ones are kind of turquoise. Uh, I'd like to use one of those on the base. Um, they have really fun scenery kind of grass tufts that they're releasing. They should be out already. Um, you should start seeing them in store soon. Okay, so we're going to wait on this a little bit. Uh, but I am going to go... I'm going to start to, um, yeah, we're going to wait for a sec on this. I can create the eyes, though. You know what? We're going to do eyes. Nope, because we're going to do some dry brushing. Let's not do that yet. We're just in the waiting game a little bit right now because we want to make sure that this paint is dry before we do the wash because then it'll just become kind of a bit of a soupy mess. Um, we can do the base, though, I think. Although we're touching it a lot, it is going to rub off. Um, actually, I can start doing the, uh, the pink here. So we're going to get squid pink. And squid pink is just another color from the line. Dilute it just a touch. And then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing. So you want to go kind of halfway up here. A little higher than half. Now the squid pink is a little lighter, but when we add that wash, I think it's going to look great. We could have gone with the darker, um, the darker pink shade that Faleja has, which right now is completely escaping me. <laughs> oh, what color? Um, oh man escaping me it's sunday folks my brain doesn't work on sundays as well as it should which is actually why i've chosen to do this show on sundays is because it's a bit of kind of a, a relaxing sort of not mentally taxing kind of side of the hobby and then monday morning is when i start doing 
kind of my last, the last of my adventure prep for Monday nights. Again, make sure you cover these really well. Give them a good, a good coat of this pink. I'll have to take it off the base to finish that, but. I did grab a, a flesh wash. I am hoping that that does come across as pink. I may have wanted to use like a watered down violet ink or something, but I think the flesh wash. That's another thing too, folks, is I don't, um, I don't test the colors or the schemes before I stream because I like to kind of, I like to solve the problems um, while we're streaming, if that makes sense, because I like to see, show you folks how I, how I tackle it, an issue. If I have a problem, like, oh, I don't really like that. How am I going to pivot? How am I going to kind of change it so that it works? I, I want I want you folks to kind of be a part of that with me so that we can kind of learn together about how to handle some of those some of those moments or those situations. Okay. That's pretty good for the pink. I think. Oh, I missed some pink, I think. Um, I did miss some of the, whoop, the bottom parts here. I want to make sure it's nice and solid. Okay. Okay, so we're going to let that dry. Go back to some questions here. Krug2227 uh, says, I... I just ran my party through the Wizard of Wines Winery in Chris of Strahd and used the way you guys did it, and they loved it. Thank you so much for the inspiring videos. Oh, that's awesome. You're welcome, Krug. That's great. And I just love to hear. It's my favorite to hear, you know, oh, I watched your, your tutorial, and, you know, that kind of um, inspired me to do something a certain way or, or whatever. Uh, or, you know, we watched your live streams, and, you know, I did it with my my group and they loved it and that just makes my day what i'm doing here is what i did sorry on the blue as well i forgot is i just took some watered down highly diluted pink and i'm just kind of breaking up that line there so it does look like it blends um, anywhere there's a kind of a hard hard stop on that pink i want it to blend into the rest of it Roman Wolf's question, of all the stars and wonderful players you've played games with and ran for, who is on your bucket list of players you'd like to game with? That's a great question. Um, Ed Greenwood. Uh, Ed Greenwood actually lives not far from where I am, a couple hours. Um, I would love the opportunity to um, play with the Father of the Forgotten Realms. That would be amazing. Uh, Joe Maganello still I haven't gamed with, and that would be fun. Um, he's a good dude. Who else haven't I gamed with yet? I think those are kind of my top ones. Okay, so I'm taking the blue wash, uh, and I am um, diluting it because I don't want it to be super strong. But basically now, just going through, I'm going a little higher. I don't want to create a line though folks you got to be careful with that but i'm just painting it onto the tentacles and you're seeing that now is creating the same effect that the sepia wash did just a little lower down here but i'm being careful where it transitions because you can end up getting kind of this line um, on your and you don't want to do that and it looks almost like kind of an almost a dirty line um on it and you don't want that for sure so we're just gonna go ahead and paint all of this wash or I should say apply 
wash all along the blue areas here. Some areas it needs a bit a bit thicker, like there, just so it goes into the recesses. You can really see the delineation in these in these uh, tentacles. And I'm really enjoying painting this flump. This is fun, super fun. Okay, um, and we're gonna go in here. I'm gonna take them off the base now, and we're just gonna go in. Make sure to get the insides of these tentacles as well, as they'll look weird if they are just solid electric blue without any wash on them. We're not going to highlight the ones in there anymore. They're basically going to live how they are. That's all they get. But that is. So there we go. You can see how great that's starting to look there. I'm going to kill a little bit of this wash here. It's a bit too much, a bit too intense. There we go. Perfect. I'd love to play with Chris Perkins, actually. That's someone who I really look up to. Um, uh, any of the Critical Role cast, Travis would be a blast. Um, also, uh, some of the group that Joe Magnello um, role plays with um, in his home game, like... Tom Morello, who is a huge, huge fan of, of Rage Against Machine. Uh, that would be amazing. Uh, the Big Show, uh, who plays with him as well. You know, all those folks. Uh, I also, I'm a huge Marvel movies fan. And uh, I know Tom Holland at one point asked, said that he wants to get the cast to play D&D. Um, and that would be a blast. So anyways, lots of people out there that I'd love to, I'd love to play with. If given the chance from the DD chat, we have Light Jackalope asks, How do y'all new here? Any advice for saving a mini that a youngin, my sister, covered in thick acrylic paints? I'm thinking nail polish remover. Uh, there's something called Simple Green, I believe it's called. Uh, I would try that. Uh, you can find it at your local kind of hardware store. Uh, and that is a kind of acrylic paint remover, and it'll strip it down to the plastic. You'll have to reprime it after that. But yeah, that, that's what I would suggest using okay so we're gonna let this blue dry i'm not sure why i put him on there uh, i am going to i think this is still wet oh oops thankfully whiz kids minis are very resilient the droppage yeah that is a little wet still i think it's a little tacky i'm gonna wait a bit more um you know what i am gonna go ahead and use my off white now we're gonna do a really light dry brush with this off-white just to bring up some final highlights. Now, for those of you that are new to painting, take your dry brush, which is typically a wider brush like this. We're gonna take off-white, straight off-white like that, and we're going to load the brush, but then wipe most of it off until hardly anything is coming off the brush. The reason you do that is because when you have something that's textured, like the tentacles on this flump, when you brush it across the grain, so basically across it like this, it is just gonna pick up on the very tops or edges of that detail and highlight it like that. So we're just gonna do this across and this, we're gonna go a little bit down past where the blue lands and that is how we blend some of that blue into and then we're going to mix some um, electric blue into some off-white. And then that is what we're going to use to highlight the tentacles at the bottom there. I'm also going to use a little bit of a dry brush here on the top. It adds a little bit. It's, it's a flat area. I typically don't dry brush flat areas because they leave kind of a weird texture. But for this case... I like the texture. It actually looks a lot like the texture that is on the art in the monster manual. So that's kind of what I'm going for. And it gives it this really cool kind of interesting texture here. So we're just going to do that, especially around the, the edge, the ridge on the top of the eye stalks. Like that. And then the top of that flump is, it's really bright. So it's maybe hard to see. There we go. But anyways, there you, 
can kind of see what I'm doing here. I don't know if you can, <laughs> but there we go. That's better. Okay. Good stuff. Here comes Bruno. I'm sure you can hear him. Now, while I wait for that wash to dry, I'm going to go ahead. Actually, before I do the eyes on that one, I'm going to do the wash on the pink one. Hopefully that's dry. We're going to try flesh wash. I hope it's pink enough or dark enough. Um, but I think it's going to be great because it just came out really kind of pink, which is nice. Let's see. Yes. I think that's going to work nicely. You guys can hear Bruno probably chewing his paws. He's got really bad allergies, and we're trying to figure out exactly what's going on. He's a vegetarian. Bruno is my French bulldog, for everyone that doesn't know out there. Um, and he is just, poor guy struggles. And we've spent lots of money at the vet trying to figure out what his deal is. But... Um, but we're doing elimination diets and all that stuff. And he's on special food and sprays and medications and poor guy. But you can probably hear him. Um, and the sound probably sounds like a flump, what a flump sounds like <laughs> when he's, when they're kind of floating around. Can you guys hear that? You hear that? <laughs> oh man, Bruno. He's the best. Okay, so that works. Put that wash on there. I think the blue kind of worked a bit better, but the pink works as well. <laughs> Bruno, you want to say hi? Okay, we're going to... Actually, what I'm going to do is I missed a little bit of wash here on the edge here. I haven't brought, brought Bruno on camera in a while, so I think it's time. Bruno, come. Come here, buddy. Let's say hi to Bruno. Flump day sounds like a good Bruno day. Oh, my gosh. He's so heavy. This is my boy. This is my boy, Bruno. Bruno, say hi to everyone. We'll go a bit bigger on this. Here we go. Say hi, buddy. That's my boy, Bruno. Bruno, look at the camera. Don't be rude. Look people in the face. See, his paws are all raw and pink because he just chews on them all day. That's his face. You smile for people. Why don't you smile for people, hey? <laughs> oh, buddy. <laughs> that is, that's my Bruno. Ah, there you go. Thanks, buddy. You're good. Okay. Uh, let's take another question while we're waiting for this to dry here. That'd be great. Question from Ready Machine. How do you know a bunch about painting those little details? What's your big secret? Um, so honestly, just again, like I, I spent a lot of time uh, watching tutorials. That's all I did um, when kind of coming up in the painting world and kind of learning how to paint. And so you just start to kind of take things as second nature and just testing. When I first started painting, I had no idea what color to paint certain things. So I didn't know what color should go into what colors, but just by practice and watching those videos, learned very quickly what works best with what, and then just kind of went from there. So it takes practice and just doing it a lot. Uh, and then learning also choose kind of who you like to learn from and do your best to kind of figure out exactly what, you know, where you want to get to and what you want to learn and get good at. And then there it is. Okay, so this is the eye stalks here for this flump. I'm taking dead white, uh, so not dead white, uh, off white. I'm just painting kind of the eyeball to start. And then we're going to go in there and give it some character. So that is flump number one's eyeballs. 
they do look in different directions, so that's fun and always cute. There's Flump Eyeball number two. And these eyes are really small, so this is going to be fun. But they are bigger than like regular mini eyes, so that's good too. But I actually want to create like the blue and then the pupil and then just a dot of white, kind of the cartoony style of, of doing eyes here. Okay, so... Uh, this guy is so fun. That wash is still drying. Okay, let's do the eyes then. So what we're going to do is we've got that off-white on there. It dries quite quickly because it's a really small amount of paint. Ziff asks, what was the first mini you painted? Do you still have it? Oh, good story. Haven't told this story in a while, so a lot of you probably haven't heard this. First mini I painted when I was a kid was a... Um, uh, why I just totally blanked. It was a pewter mini. Um, they are now Iron Wind, but they used to be called, oh, help me chat. I can't believe I just blanked on that name because they're good friends of mine. And it's part of my childhood, but I'm 41 and my brain isn't what it used to be. Um, okay, so I'm going to take some electric blue here while I wait for chat to tell me and then I'll tell the rest of the story. Ralph Partha, <laughs> Ralph Partha. It was a Ralph Partha mini. I actually have it here. I wonder, I have it here somewhere. I saw it recently, but it's a little kind of cleric miniature. Um, here, I'm gonna show you how to do this first. So we're gonna go with this electric blue and we're gonna carefully start from the center and work out that pupil. You can see that pupil there. Then we're gonna go here, work out that pupil there. So now we've got flump pupils kind of in different directions. We're going to let that dry for a second. Anyways, so I was at Origins for the first time, and um, it was a really kind of special time for me. Um, it was my first uh, kind of professional con I'd ever gone to as Realm Smith. So it was just a really cool, cool moment. Um, and I was at a Ralph Partha party. And one night, and this is where I met a lot of kind of my friends that I still call very close friends in the industry now. Um, but I was with, I was sitting on a couch with uh, the Crafting Muse, uh, Vanessa V. Muse, uh, and Holly Conrad, and sitting across from uh, Stefan Picorni, and uh, met my good friend Turbo there. Anyway, so we were all kind of hanging out. And... Um, And Satine was there too. Uh, and Rudy, I think, was there. Rutenberg. Anyway, so there's a bunch of us. And we're hanging out. First time I met these guys. Loving life. And I there was a bowl of Ralph Partha minis. Original sculpts. And I reached into this bowl and I picked out a mini. And it was the exact same mold, model, figure, type, that I painted when I was 12. And that was the first mini I ever painted. And I pulled it out. And I got teary, and I started to kind of tear up, and I had a moment, and it felt like I had just come full circle, which, thank you for asking about that story. That is my, that is my story. It was a really great, great moment. Um, I went blue on this guy's eyes, even though he's pink, um, because I figured he'd still have blue eyes, even though he's feeling curious instead of, instead of sad, because this one's kind of sad. <laughs> so cute all right so now i've used that i'm going to get black and the only reason i got black out in this palette i know you guys hear that nom 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 <laughs> oh man uh, okay so bruno enough buddy okay so we're gonna take black this is the only reason i have it Get a nice, oh, that's not good. We got pink in it. Bruno. Sounds like, I need to record that and put it into one of our Sirenscape sound sets as a creature. Okay, so. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to add a pupil. So an even smaller area inside of this blue is where we're going to add our pupil of black like that.
We're going to do this again on this one here. And you can see one of the keys to doing really small details like this is to rest your painting hand onto the miniature. See how I have my hand and I'm holding my painting hand because then you have a lot more control over your brush. So you're not kind of like just wavering and shaking like that. Okay, so that is flumpy pupils. And then to finish off the eye, there's a tiny bit of paint, so it's already dry. Should be. Bruno. Okay, so then I'm going to just dot the top of the pupil here, just like cartoons, to give it some life. And that just gives it... Let's see what I did there. And that just gives it the tiny bit of personality. Oh, that was in the middle. That was not in the top. Just use my, oh, and that is too wet now. What happens is water tends to kind of uh, stick in the ferrule, which is the metal part of your brush, or up the up kind of the handle, and then and then uh, migrates its way down, and then you get these droplets that you do not want when you're trying to do uh, detail work like this. So let's try that again. I'm just gonna go boop, a little. There we go. Those are flump eyes. It's one, and I gotta put the black. I have to add the pupil on this one. There. Oh yeah, and the reason why I was hanging out with all those awesome folks um, during that party is because earlier that night we had actually uh, done our first con convention where we did our Vallejo painting. Um, I don't know why I went and just got blue because I need white. <laughs> um, where we did our first Vallejo uh, painting uh, masterclass at a show, which was that Origins. And I had met all those wonderful people while they uh, painted with Realm Smith. It was great. Now, what I will do with this flump is typically I will I'll hit it with a I'll hit it with a um, matte varnish spray um, because oh, this one worked out. I'll hit it with a matte varnish spray, and there we go. And those are two more flump eyes like that. Um, I'll hit it with a matte varnish spray, but then I'll hit it with a um, uh, gloss varnish or semi-gloss varnish because they, they're like slimy and kind of um, – they're kind of slimy and jellyfish-like. Uh, so I imagine they'd be a little bit kind of like wet slightly. So And they look that way on – they look that way on the, the art in the book. So I would definitely think that I would want to sort of make them a little shiny and glossy. Man, that Bruno, I tell you, he's just going, just going at it. Bruno, hey, Bruno, buddy, you're killing me here. Oh, French Bulldogs are so funny. Okay, so we're doing the highlights there as we did before. Then we're going to do the highlights on the, the tentacles. Again, doing a little bit lower than where the pink stops because we want to blend them a little bit like that. Look at that. There we go. Okay, we're going to let that wash completely dry. Um, and then this wash is pretty much dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix a little bit of electric blue with some off-white and get kind of a lighter color here. I want a really light blue. And then I'm going to wipe most of it off of my paper towel, and I am going to run it along here. And that is going to be my highlight. Look at that. You see that? And that will complete 
this flump. Well, not quite complete this flump because his base still needs to get done. But you can see that is added immediate highlights along the miniature like so. And again, I'm using that a little bit higher than where the blue ends so that we get that blending. You can see how nicely blended that is. That There's no hard line. And that is our sad flump. Just need to do, like I said, the base, um, which we have time. I'll get her done. Um, for this one, I gotta be careful uh, with too much white for a highlight because um, I don't want to um, obscure because the because because the pink is, is so much lighter than the blue is I don't want to obscure the pink too much and make it look non pink so I but I am going to take a little bit of white get into the pink here so it's a little bit of a lighter color pink and then just hit the edges here It's just giving it the ever so, oh, that's too much. You can see that it's just highlighting and picking up all those cool details because their, their tentacles have these little kind of like bristles at the end. Not bristles, but I forget what the kind of the technical term is. And there we go. That is a wrap on the body of the pink flump. Okay, make sure all my brushes are nice and clean. I'm gonna take some somber gray. I like using somber gray because the somber gray is gray with a bit of blue in it. It's kind of, it's on, on the bluer side. So it's a little cooler than uh, other grays. And it reminds me of kind of the underdark. It reminds me of what the underdark floor would probably feel like. So we're just gonna go through we're not gonna be super careful here, except that we do not wanna get it onto the base too much, if at all. I do have a little bit of primer that goes up the base, so I do wanna cover that, but I don't want to get it onto, not the base, sorry, the, um... oh no, I got, I totally got <laughs> um somber gray on my flump. Let's see if the eraser works. Oh, oh, this is my, there we go, it works. So sometimes when you make a mistake, if the paint is still pretty wet, you can just take a, you can take a um, clean brush, wet it, and then it worked. Awesome. Uh, and then you can just wipe it off, and I did. I panicked there for a minute. Ain't gonna lie. I'd have to repaint some of that. I'd have to basically go from the, probably the mid-tone level. So I'd have to repaint um, the half heavy ochre and half bone white step over again. So that is somber gray on the base. These bases are nice and small. It doesn't take too long. Again, my primer goes up a little bit up the base, so I just want to cover that. But otherwise, or up the stand. It's kind of a bit of a flight stand, I guess, right? But I definitely don't want to get the clear part, and I want to try and stay away from these tentacles. The nice thing about these tentacles and Whiskers Minis in general is they're a bit bendy, so I can actually bend that out of the way and get in there. Also, my hands are pretty dirty with, or messy with paint. So you have to wanna be careful too that you're not holding your mini like I am with, your, with paint on your fingers because it will transfer. If it gets a little wet, it will get on there. There we go. Perfect. Not many flumps, I don't think, in Barovia, but 
Tides of Wild Mount is uh, is around the corner, so uh, you never know. Okay, so we're gonna let that somber gray dry. Um, that is gonna take a little bit of time, so I'm actually not sure if I want to wait for that to finish. Um, what I would do though is once that somber gray dry, gray is dry, I would hit it with a black wash. Uh, and then when the black wash is dry, then I would add a little bit of a tuft to it. Um, I'll do that and you guys can check it out um, in, I'll do that and you guys can check it out uh, on Instagram. And if you liked what you saw today, uh, make sure that you follow and you subscribe to our channel. It will let you know, uh, if you follow us, it'll let you know when we go live. And if you subscribe, you get access to our Discord where you can play as Vistanis and be a part of our ongoing narrative for Into the Mist, which again is just so much fun and and we're just, we're growing in leaps and bounds and we ha literally have hundreds of people role playing as Vistani on our Discord as we speak. So it's pretty awesome. Um, check out our Instagram on all the socials. We're at Realmsmith TV, Realmsmith TV. You can check it out. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We post there all the time and you'll see updated kind of uh, images and stuff um, for all that we do, as well as announcements for upcoming shows and little teasers and, and behind the scenes looks. I'll see you guys tomorrow night for Into the Mist, episode six. Huge cliffhanger uh, last episode. So um, can't wait to see what happens there. And then Tuesday behind the screen, Thursday players table, and then back for Nolzers next Sunday. Um, and we are very excited for all of that. You folks love each other. Make sure that you take care of each other during this time uh, or any time, really. Hug somebody this week that is within your circle and it is um, safe to do so. Um, and just really take care of yourselves. And remember that there are people out there that hurt and that need your help. And we are reminded weekly how our stream, what we do, and our Discord has brought people out of kind of a difficult place. So um, we love to hear those stories and we love that we can be there for people to do that kind of stuff. So hugs all around, virtual hugs, and we love you guys and we'll see you tomorrow night. Bye.